All right, so in today's video, we are going to answer the question, partition to k equal subset sums. Here is an example. I think the example explains the question for us. An example, we get an array. The sum of all of the array elements is 20. k is four, meaning we need to form four subsets with an equal sum. What is our total sum? Our total sum is 20. Each bucket needs to be an equivalent sum. Four buckets, a total sum of 20. Each of our buckets are going to have 20, our total sum, divided by the number of buckets we need to make. We need to make four buckets with a sum of five, a sum of five. As we can see here, we can see that our answer looks like this. Four buckets, we put five in here, one and four in here, two and three in here, two and three in here. We only can use every element in the array once, and we must use all elements in the array. As you can tell, this looks like a problem where we try placements. We backtrack if a certain placement doesn't work. I might throw the one into bucket one. I might remove it from bucket one. I might throw four into bucket one. I might remove it. We're going to be working with four buckets. We have two choices. We can explicitly create buckets. We can make an array of size four, try placements into the bucket, backtrack if the placements don't work, and then when we fill all the buckets and exhaust all the items, we're finished. That's approach one. Approach two is we simulate how we fill those buckets. We don't actually create K buckets, we do a recursion. And we're going to see that in our code. We do a recursion and work on a certain bucket. And when we finish a bucket, we reduce K. When we reduce K, that means we have finished a bucket. If I have four buckets and I fill one of them, K is now three. Now I need to fill three buckets with a sum of five. If I finish another bucket, now I need to fill two buckets with a sum of five. So that is how our recursion is going to fix this problem. Let's see the code. Let's jump straight into the code so we can get a good understanding of one angle to solving this problem. And keep in mind, there's also a dynamic programming approach to this problem with a different time complexity than the backtracking solution, but let's just look at the backtracking solution for this video. When we approach this with the backtracking approach, Keep in mind there's also the dynamic programming approach. When we do the backtracking approach, we're trying to fill the K buckets that we need to fill. We're trying to fill these buckets. In this recursive code, and the code is in the description as well, code is always in the description, comment it fully for your understanding. We're going to be simulating filling buckets here, but you could explicitly create the buckets and use space and create those buckets and place items. Backtrack if we can't place any more items and we have a bad positioning or a bad, or if we find ourselves in a position where we can't continue, backtrack. In this algorithm, what we're going to do is we're going to simulate filling buckets. So let's walk through the code now. We have our driver function. Our driver function, first we get the sum of the items. In our original thing, we saw the sum was 20. If k is zero, we cannot fill zero buckets. That's impossible. If we have an array and we need to fill zero buckets, we return false. We can't do that. If the sum of all the items in the array divided by k does not equal zero, this means that we are going to have to have a floating point amount, a decimal amount, in each bucket. We're going to have a subset sum that is a decimal amount or a floating point amount, but we can't do that. We can't fill that bucket with integers and expect to hit a floating point amount. That's impossible. So that's why we return false there. I forgot to finish the function signature there, my bad. What we're going to do is we're going to kick off our recursion. Here are the key parameters to our recursion where we're going to simulate the filling of buckets. The key thing, where do we start in our iteration? We're going to start choosing items from index zero in the array. So if we choose an item at index one, then we won't be able to choose any item before that. We're gonna to have to choose items after that item. So all this does, iteration start just tells us where do we start choosing items from in the array. And then we have the actual array. We have a Boolean array. We could use a set of sorts. We could use a Boolean array. It's just the Boolean array is more convenient. We want to know what items we've already used. We have to use all of the items and we cannot use a single item more than once. We must know what is used. Also, we keep track of the sum of the current bucket we are working on. And we keep track of the target sum we want a single bucket to sum to. So if k equals one, what we're going to do is through our recursion, each time we fill a bucket, we reduce k by one and keep the target sum per bucket the same. If we have one bucket to fill left, 
We are finished. We know partitioning can happen because we have filled K minus one buckets. For example, if we, in our original example, had to fill four buckets, each bucket would have a target sum of five because the original total sum of our array was 20. If we fill three buckets, we have one bucket left to fill. That means we have filled five, five, five. We have filled 15 value worth of in, into our buckets. Our original array had a value total of 20. That means our array has five in value left. Our last bucket will for sure be filled because we know that we can partition equal buckets. If we partition k minus one buckets, we can stop when we have only one bucket because we know for sure we're going to be able to fill that bucket with whatever is left. If we use 15 from a total of 20 and we fill those three buckets, we have five left. All we need for the last bucket is five. So we know that we'll be able to fill that last bucket. That is why we can stop our recursion at k equals one. When we have finished a bucket, this is our second base case. When we finish a bucket, we need to reduce k, we need to reduce k, and we need to reset the sum of the bucket we're working on to zero because we're working on a new bucket. This is all that changes. We continue our recursion, we return the result of the partitioning continued from here, and we now work on the next bucket. And keep in mind, we still have track of the items we've already used. Our scene array, our Boolean array, is still in memory holding what we've already used. Then we go into our iteration, our choices that we make. Now we try every item from iteration start to the end of the array. If the item has not been used, mark that item as used, and then try to partition with that item added. Try to continue partitioning with that item added. We increment the iteration start by one because we want to start after this item because we just used it. And we add the item's value to the bucket sum that we're working on. And eventually, the bucket sum is going to equal the target bucket sum. And at that point, we work on the next bucket, and then the next one, and then we're going to reach one bucket. And at that point, we know we can partition into k equals some buckets. That is our answer. That is what the question asks of us. And then we can return true. So what this does is it explores all the possible placements. If this returns false, if a placement fails, and we re reach a position that we cannot partition from, we backtrack, we backtrack, and then we try another item in the same stack frame. And we unmark the item if it didn't work, Iteration continues, we try another item, and then we try another item. This is basically the backtracking al algorithm. If nothing works, we return false. Nothing works. Whether we're deep into the recursion, or whether we're at the very top level of our stack, of stack frames in our recursion, if we can't partition from a certain point, we return false. This is the recursion. The code is in the description. Much more readable, much more understandable than this. I just wanted to walk through it. So now let's look at the time and space complexities to this problem. And they're kind of difficult. All right, so for the time and space complexities, this problem, you can tell that this is going to have a rough time complexity when you see that the input for this problem is actually limited. The length of the array nums is actually limited to be at a maximum a length of 16. Whenever this happens, you know that it's going to be an exponential to a super exponential time complexity because it is going to scale very, very fast as input gets larger. So the time complexity is not trivial to calculate because what we need to think about is how many times can we fork from a certain function? How many choices are we going to make from a certain node in our recursion, in our backtracking? And what is the potential of, of the paths we could take? The, this is very mathematically rigorous, and you probably in an interview situation would not need to deduce the exact time complexity of this problem, but you could give it a loose upper bound. As for the space complexity to the algorithm we just saw, we know we are going to have to place up to n elements. We won't place all n elements in our theoretical buckets. We're not actually filling buckets, we're just simulating the filling of them. And remember, we will not fill the last bucket. The worst case space complexity will be controlled by the call stack in the recursion. 
And imagine we fill bucket one, we fill bucket two, we fill bucket three, we won't fill the last bucket. Maybe there's one item, maybe there's two items, maybe there's three items. That means we're going to skip the processing of one, two, or three items. So then it becomes n minus one, n minus two, n minus three. The thing is, we can just drop those constants. Our stack space is going to scale linearly with the input. We're still going to be filling k minus one buckets because we won't fill the last one, but we'll definitely be simulating the filling of k minus one buckets. That entails we're going to make nearly n choices, not completely n choices, because we won't fill the last bucket. We're going to make nearly n choices. And this is going to mean we're going to scale in a linear fashion. As this gets very long, each placement entails a placement on the stack a placement on the stack, a placement. We can call the space O of n, where n is the items in the array. So, that's all for this video. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We have hundreds more questions to cover. This is going to be a huge feat of mankind to do all of these problems and give them good explanations. Yeah. <laughs>